I'm Austin and I play in turnover and I'm going to uh, run through some of the gear I use live. So this is a J Mascus uh, Signature Squire Jazz Master. Um, I've only had it for about six months probably, less than that. Um, I got it when we were in this, uh, on our last tour in September, uh, anticipating going in the studio to record this record. I'd always wanted like a jazz master, and to get anything like halfway decent, usually you have to spend like 1,500 bucks or something and get in a nice American one. But um, I had heard good things about this one, and we actually played a show uh, not far from here, and um, one of the bands had it and let me try it out, and I really liked how it played and I really liked how the tone sounded. Everything is hand selected by Jay Mascus. Um, it's like a bass wood body, hot rod Jazzmaster pickups. Um, some of the hardware on it's like a little bit cheaper made, but overall it plays great. I love the tone, it's awesome. The amp is the secret to any kind of tone that I have that sounds like me playing. Um, we actually got this when we went in to record Peripheral Vision and it's uh, like a classic amp started getting made in the late 70s and really came to prevalence in the 80s. Um, Johnny Marr and Robert Smith both you well Johnny Marr actually used this amp. Um, Robert Smith used another uh, Roland Jazz Chorus. It's actually a 412 called um, a 160 as opposed to this, which is a 120, I believe. But um, it's a solid state amplifier, no tube at all, which is really what sold me on it because of all the headaches of a tube valve guitar amp. It's definitely got a great, great clean tone. That's what it's known for, and it has a built-in um, modulation channel, which is pretty signature sounding of these Roland amps. It's got chorus and vibrato, but I don't use any of the reverb or distortion on this. I use that for like stomp boxes ahead of it, but uh, it takes it takes effects pedals really well. It's virtually headacheless because there's no tube, so I, I love the tone. It's definitely my favorite amp I've ever had. So this is what the amp sounds like, just straight my guitar into the amp. It's got like a pretty nice um, chorusy tone to it. Uh, I'll show you what it sounds like with the distortion on. It's not great, but this is with me cranked at about a little past noon. Doesn't take anything really well. It gets a little out of that sustain, and it just sounds pretty papery. So I don't mess with that too much. But I love the clean tone of it. Um, and then I can show you how crazy this uh, chorus gets. It sound it can get sounding pretty wild. So it's nice sounding, and uh, then you can switch to the vibrato tone. In it. Which is nice in some cases too. I use the vibrato and um, I use the vibrato and the chorus settings a lot in the studio, but live I just stick it straight to chorus and it sounds really nice. So even by itself without anything adding to it, it's a great sounding amp, I love it. Um, and then the effects pedals just make it even cooler. So uh, the first thing in my chain, other than the tuner, which is pretty cool too, that's a Polytune Noir, which is just a mini version of the Polytune by TC Electronic. Um, you can like tune all your strings at once, pretty standard, but that's a pretty cool pedal. But other than that, um, I use the OCD Full Tone, that, or the Full Tone OCD rather. Um, that's the first pedal in my chain, and it's an overdrive pedal that's really known for having a pretty crazy overdrive, but I just use it as a boost, so because um, I don't have anything that I use too much distortion on. So if my regular tone is here, just adds a nice little mid-range and a little break up to it that cuts through well in a mix, so I like that a lot. And then second is um, a Digitech Polaire Reverb, which is actually pretty new to me. I just got it on this tour when I was in Arizona, and it has a bunch of different pretty cool reverbs. It's a digital, it's not anything super old school, but um, I like the tones of it. It does some really cool stuff that I don't practically use too much in a set, but um, on this setting, I just use the hall setting, and it adds a nice kind of shimmer to everything without being overwhelming. So. Um, without it, I'm here. 
and then with it on us. And I use that pretty much throughout the entire set just to add a nice ambience to everything. Um, and then other than that, actually the secret weapon kind of of my pedal board and of our live set right now, um, and a lot of the record you'll hear undertones of this kind of just um, mid-rangey blanket of just kind of a warm tone, and it's something called a Super Ego synth engine, and it's by uh, Electro Harmonics. If you're familiar with the Freeze pedal, it's essentially the same pedal, but it allows you to, instead of just loop one sound, you can layer a bunch of different sounds and create kind of an orchestral effect, so that's pretty cool. Um, in most of our songs, I kind of swell into it to create like a nice little vibe and I'll show you what I mean. So that'll just infinitely sustain and that's pretty nice and then over that play whatever riff. And uh, that's about all she wrote for the pedal board. It's pretty, it's pretty simple, but it gets what I need to be done done. I like to keep it pretty simple with the pedal board. I don't have any plans as of now to add anything. I'm sure I will at some point. I might be interested in getting like an octave pedal or something like that in the future. Eric plays one that I really like. It's uh, the Pog, which is by Electro Harmonics too. But uh, I like the simplicity of it live, not having to really worry about it and stress, stress me out, you know. The less to go wrong is kind of always nice in a live setting on tour. So this is everything that I play live and everything that's on Peripheral Vision. Um, if you like the way that sounds, make sure you check something about it. It's really cool stuff. Thank you guys for watching.